In a previous video, I shared the framework that I use to visualize the funding path of SaaS startups from their starting point until the Series A. In this video, I will use this framework as a support to illustrate the different funding paths that I see currently on the market. A very common scenario for a typical SaaS company is to raise money every 18 to 24 months until the Series A. Many founders start with a bit of friends and family money at the beginning to develop an MVP that will enable them to raise a pre-seed round around 12 to 18 months later. They will then reach a couple of tens of thousands of dollars of MRR to raise a seed round, generally around 18 to 24 months later. Most startups will die during that stage, but for the ones that manage to keep growing, they will raise their Series A, also usually 18 to 24 months later. Of course, these are just broad ranges. You'll often see shorter or longer cycles as well, but this overall pattern is quite usual for many VC-backed SaaS. What is interesting is that the past couple of years have seen an increasing number of financing paths that deviate quite a bit from this base scenario. In the rest of this video, I will cover several of them. A first variation that I see is founders bootstrapping their startups until they start to escape velocity and have the metrics to raise a Series A. They basically skip the pre-seed and seed round to jump directly to the Series A round. Typically, these founders want to start a bootstrap company from day one and don't plan on ever raising with VCs. They often start with a bit of money they have put to the side or by building the first version of their product while they still have a job. It takes them a couple of months to build an MVP with usage but what can take longer is the monetization phase. These companies can take a couple of years to arrive at the 50K threshold as they grow slowly. But suddenly, after that, their company starts to grow much faster and they enter a territory where they have the option to raise money in order to support this growth, especially with hiring. What's interesting with this path is that I saw founders who were die-hard bootstrappers finally raise a Series A. Since they had great metrics, they could negotiate great terms and it became a good way for them to fuel their growth. That being said, I have to admit that the past couple of months, aka since the crisis hit, I saw fewer companies with this profile. However, this market condition will likely put a lot of VC-backed companies out of business, so I wouldn't be surprised to see many more bootstrap companies raising a Series A at the end of this crisis. And there will be a premium on these survivors. A very common scenario that I see at the moment is what I call the seed death valley, where companies have raised a pre-seed round but are struggling to raise a seed round, mainly because they have metrics or are on markets that VCs don't believe in. The starting pattern of these companies is no different than many other SaaS startups. The founders start with friends and family money. It will then take them around 6 to 12 months to build MVP with real usage, and they will pass the 1 to 10k MRR range within 18 to 24 months which usually enables them to raise a pre-seed round. And after that, despite the fact that they have a working product that generates real revenue, they will struggle to raise a seed round with VC firms, even when they are around the 30 to 50K of MRR. The main reason is that they are on markets that VCs don't believe can deliver huge outcomes. This is why I call this stage the seed death valley. It's the case of many vertical SaaS companies that I see and which struggle to raise a real seed round because they have a couple of tens of thousands of MRR, but VC thinks that they won't be able to scale. Either because the vertical play is too local, or because the go-to-market to scale to 100 million of revenue seems too complicated, or because they think the total addressable market, the TAM, is just too small to build a massive company. And what I usually see next is that through a lot of pain, a lot of time, some founders manage to raise a couple of hundreds of thousands of dollars from business angels, or from more obscure funds. Others cannot raise and need to continue growing their startup in a very scrappy slash lean manner in order to survive. The beauty for some of these startups is when they continue to grow slowly, but after a while, they manage to build a strong product market fit that results in fast growth with great business fundamentals. And then they can raise a Series A at the end of this seed death valley. 
As a side note, at the moment, I see an increasing number of vertical SaaS that are in the middle of this C death valley. So it's definitely a pattern that I see quite often at the moment. Another pattern that I see is what I call the long MVP or long monetization play, aka startups that know that they will take longer than average to arrive at the MVP with real usage stage or at the 1 to 10K MRR range. These companies can take up to three to four years to reach these stages instead of 18 to 24 months. SaaS targeting enterprise customers or open source companies are two examples of startups that typically need more time than usual to reach these milestones. The key for them is then to plan initial funding accordingly. This is why you often see these long MVP slash long monetization startups raise a bit more money at inception and at pre-seed stage. Not every founder can do that though. This is why you often see repeat entrepreneurs or projects coming from startup studios in this category. When it comes to open source projects, it's very often pre-monetization metrics, such as GitHub stars and developer adoption, that will enable these companies to raise a seed round and even a series A if their traction is outstanding. This is a funding path that I currently see quite often as there's currently a growing wave of open source software. The last pattern that I see on the market is actually not a new one as it is the hype starter one. These companies will raise a couple of millions of dollars at the pre-seed stage, often without a working product because they are in a hyped market. It's no surprise if I tell you that what is hyped at the moment are AI native startups. If the founding team has great AI pedigree, then every VC will fight to get in. And it's not unusual to see companies raising a couple of millions of dollars with high valuations, even when they are pre-product. 